His name is Ish Berry, and this is Berry Media Unrestricted. He explores the city of Houston, looking for people who are not afraid to get unrestricted. Interesting men and women who have an extraordinary journey, doing the kind of things that make great stories to tell for the rest of us. Now get ready for Unrestricted. We on? Good? Bills are all paid? Yep. Okay, uh-huh. make sure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Barry Media Unrestricted, the Unrestricted Podcast. Um, Guess what today is, Blue? Is it National Photography Day? Mm-mm. Damn, I'm surprised. No, nah, that's, that's sometime over the summer. What is it? It's our 20th episode. Oh! <laughs> He on point today. Yep. That's a lot yes, of episodes. Ma'am. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. A lot of episodes, a lot of guests, uh, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah, so this is episode number 20. I'd like to welcome everybody. Thank you, for listeners all over the, the world, actually. Oddly enough, I try to remain humble. Humble, excuse me, but when I look at the analytics of the podcast, yeah, we actually got listeners out in, like, Australia and New Zealand, of course, Canada. Uh, shout out to DB Cooper repping it down over there in, uh, yes. in Canada, holding us down out there. Appreciate you, DB. Um, but yeah, on this twentieth episode, I wanted to talk about um, photography. It's actually something I get asked about a lot because by trade I am a photographer. <laughs> so <laughs> I figure you are. Um, I- I'll do this episode and what I'm going to do in the future. If someone asks me photography questions, go like, "Hey, listen to this episode. I answer everything." <laughs> Right. But um, that'd be a way to plug the podcast, too, going forward. But I want to talk about the good and the bad with photography. I want to start things off talking about the bad first, and then we're going to lead, you know, in the show on a good note, talking about the good with photography. So let's just dive right in here. Um, the bad about photography. One of the bad things about photography is <clears throat> actually some well with me personally, I can only speak from every and let me let me like kind of back up here. Everything I'm about to say, both the good and the bad, are from my personal experience. You know, because like I'm a different photographer than when it comes to photography, it's an art form and just like any art, whether if it's painting, music, whatever, everyone has a different style. Everyone uses different, you know, tools for their trade, etc. So I can only speak from me. Uh, one of the things that annoys me the most about photography are, believe it or not, my male friends. Mm. And I say that because some of my male friends are so goddamn unprofessional. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I get it, you know, to a certain extent, because on one hand, all right, you know, they look at pictures I take, especially of, you know, female models, and I've had you know, guys come to me and it's like, oh, man, I don't see how you fucking do it. I would try to get with her, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you don't need to go in photography. And actually, you don't need to go into business at all. Right. Because nine times out of ten, most beautiful women are taken (laughs) just straight up, you know. Secondly, Hmm. 99.99% of the women I work with on a regular basis are taken, you know, so like, you know, just naming a couple yourself, boo, you're happily married with three kids. Um, uh, goddamn, you know, Lola is Lola Vaughn's in a long-term committed relationship. Yeah. Um, uh, most of the, the, uh, beautiful, uh, fitness, uh, bodybuilders and models who are in relationships. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even the ones, yeah, even the ones I've had on this very show. they're busy. Yeah, and yeah, even the ones I've had on this very show, you know, uh, Scarlett Adams, you know, she's in a long-term relationship. Uh, Asha? Yeah, Asha is married. Um, <laughs> goddamn, um, uh, Amber, she's dating right now. She talked about that on her episode. Um, the, the chick we had on, the last bodybuilder chick we had in here right before the Thanksgiving break, Ruby Nicholson, you know, she's married. Her husband was actually in here in the studio. We gave him a lot of kudos. You know, he helps her with her prep and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, guys out there thinking that they could get in photography to meet, well, not just to meet women, but to hook up with women. It's like, nah, homeboy, nah, you don't, you don't do that. That's not cool. <laughs> and 
just like with anything in life, a woman, with, you know, I guess the way I can say it is like, and I try to explain to my guy friends like this, is that a beautiful woman doesn't matter what she has on her. If she goes to a place of business, she wants to go, you know, let's just say a restaurant. Go to a restaurant, get her a meal, eat, and leave. She's not trying to hook up with anybody. She's not trying to hook up with the waiter, the chef, the manager, the owner, none of that shit. Just want to get in right. and, and get out. And the same thing goes for photography and what a lot of guys who lust after women don't realize or a lot of guys who's trying to get into photography to hook up with women don't understand is, especially in, I can't account for other cities, but in Houston, the photography stuff is a real close-knit community. Everyone mm-hmm. either knows each other, photographers and models are hurt of each other, or it's like that six degrees of separation kind of thing, right? right? So let's just say you got a guy out there that, you know, for example, let's say, Blue, you work with, you know, I don't know, John the photographer, for example. I'm just making up a name here, whatever. John the photographer, yeah, you, you know, you take, you know, he takes these pictures of you good, and then, you know, he tries to hit on you. He says something inappropriate. Well, not only are you going to go back and tell your husband, but you're going to tell other models you know in the community, like, hey, watch right. out for that guy. He's trying to, you know, he's trying to sleep with folks or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, that guys have a bad rep. And with me personally, as a photographer, one of the things that I'm proud of the most is my, even above the quality of my work and my price and work ethic and all that, is just my, Professionalism. Exactly. You took the words out of my mouth, <laughs> you know, because, I mean, that that really brightens up my day, especially for me to know so many, you know, female models that, especially the ones who, you know, are willing to get scantily clad or who have gotten scantily clad for me, that have, like, no problem doing it. Because, you know, that to me, that's a, that's a thing of trust and comfort. You know, if a mm-hmm. woman feels comfortable enough to get, half naked or naked, you know, for a guy to take pictures of him, like, that says a lot about that guy, you know, right. as a photographer. You know, that says a lot about uh, about him. And I, I take um, I take pride in that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also for a woman's husband or significant other to also be like, you know, oh, what you doing today? Oh, I got a bikini shoot. Oh, with who? Barry Media. Oh, okay. He's cool. You know, have fun. And that's how <laughs> that's how it is with me and Jermaine. <laughs> I believe does, I want to say it. But this I, man I don't give me no problems. If if matter of fact, if I go work with someone else, he'll probably be like, "Is Ish coming, bro?" This is a whole different photographer because he trusts you. Like yeah. he know, like you just you gonna be saying crazy shit, but he yeah, not. Yeah, I'll say we crazy have fun shit behind behind yeah. the scenes and shit. You know, and uh, but you're and of perfect, course we like, have fun yeah. though. And then like just like that time when um. We was at that park a couple years ago with Lady Bassarita and those guys kept kind of circling and shit. And I had to, I had to go Debo on, I had to go Suge Knight on Man, them and check them. That em was crazy. And shit. I'm glad you <laughs> and they was followed there, you. Though. Yeah, because like, they followed you to the very restroom close to the shit. restroom. Yeah, and I was like, uh-uh, nah, I gotta, I gotta, um, I gotta stop on that. And I'll explain that story real quick. We got time. So basically, I forgot how many years ago this was, but this had to be what we're in 2000, we're at the end of 2020 right now. So this had to be what, 2000. 16, 17, mm-hmm. um, it was my first time working with uh, a cosplayer that was real big out here in Houston, Lady Bass Arena. We went to Herman Park. She wanted to do two outfits, and she came out in the first outfit. She was in a cosplay as a magician, as this DC character, uh, DC Comics character named Zantana. And, Boo, you actually had... Uh, you assisted me with that shoot, and part of our idea was because you needed some acting pictures, right, for right. what you was yeah. doing. So you came up dressed real nice, tight-fitting mm-hmm. uh, dress and everything. We got there several minutes earlier so I could do your pictures, and then we waited on Bassarina and her friend to come. So these two guys, the two black guys were like, you know, I guess I guess initially they were taking a jog or whatever in the park, and they happened to see, oh, there's, you know, two fine-ass women, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and And one of them... Is dressed like a magician wearing a tight ass corset, big thighs, and their, you know, titties all out and shit. Yeah. So, and you know, me as a photographer, I have no problem when people, 
you know, see my clients in public and they want to take pictures, as long as my client doesn't have, you know, if we right. got enough time and shit, you know, because I get it because, like, you know, certain women walking around in certain outfits, you don't see that every day, you know. Right. I would ask for fucking pictures and shit, too, you know, <laughs> and, and post it on social media. Like, oh, shit, look what the fuck I ran into today, you know, doing my daily jog in the park or whatever, right? Same way, you know, these guys, and I, I give it to them, they were nice. They were like, oh, man, you know, can we get pictures? Y'all look good. So... You know, I let them do their thing, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, they're going to take a couple of pictures. I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, they're going to take a couple of pictures of and with Blue and Bass Arena, and then we can get the shooting. So they kind of did get a little overboard with the time, and I was like, hey, mm -hmm. you know, we got time because then it started getting hot that day. It was real. i never forget. It was real hot. I was sweating like a hog at the end. So we go inside the park to shoot, and they were kind of watching from a distance, which still, you know— I didn't mind or whatever, because for those who haven't seen, um, who don't know Lady Bass Arena, if you follow me, my photography, so you should know who she is. But if you don't, Google her, Lady Bass Arena. You know, she's a thick chick with these enormous sized breasts. <laughs> Just <laughs> being blunt and out there. And she had on this magician outfit, so, you know, her breasts were, you know, she was two steps away from having a wardrobe malfunction, basically. <laughs> you know what? I'm done. I'm serious. Am I lying? Nah, that was the first time I met her, too. I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was my first time. It was my second time meeting her in person, but my first time working with her, you know, getting her as a client. So it was real, real, you know, big to me. I was trying to impress. So the guys are, like, on another side of the park, and they're looking, and I think they were probably still taking video and cell phone pictures or whatever, which I didn't mind. But then, boo, you had to go to the restroom, I had to and as you're, sure. yeah, and as you were going, you you know, you came back to me and told me that they were following or they were standing too close to the restroom or something. And yeah, like, like it seemed like they were gonna go in. Like it seemed like one of them was trying to like catch me going inside of the restroom, and I would have been cornered. I mean, that was scary for me. Mm. Yeah, and I went and got. I sure did. I went and told you ASAP. Oh yeah, yeah. You came back and you told me, and um, and I wasn't sure having did. that shit because mm -hmm. like number one. You know, I don't, and I know this might sound fucked up because I've lived in Texas since 96 and I do not like the heat. You would think that, okay, well, you're grown now, like move the motherfucking Ohio or somewhere, you know? It don't work like that, though. Yeah. So being out there as the sun is reaching, you know, its peak, it was a bright, sunny day. Mm -hmm. I'm hot. I'm already sweating. And, I, and my dumb ass is wearing a fucking, instead of wearing a t-shirt, I had on a goddamn polo shirt, you know? So, and... You coming back telling me about these guys? I'm like, oh, hell no. So I went to the guys like, look. I told him, she was like, look, I got to get the fuck out of here. I'm trying to do business. I'm trying to photograph these chicks. And we're trying to get the fuck on. I was like, look, if y'all don't move, I'll move y'all. I'm going to call the cops. It's like, oh, so, so sorry, big homie. Sorry. Uh, no, we were just made. I was like, look, I, I, I get it. Ass mm -hmm. and titties. I, I get it. You know, these women are dressed, something you don't see every day. Y'all took y'all pictures. Y'all compliment them. You got your pictures and your videos and stuff, you know, just, you know, and I think they even asked y'all for your social media and stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know, you connect with them on social media. You got this shit. It's like, just move on. We're trying to get busy. And they, they fucking left. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't fucking play. Yeah, they, they was out of there. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they were out of there. Um, and, you know, we had a good day. After that, you know, the, the shoot and everything, you know, went well. But, yeah, it's just like, um. I, and and a lot of guys who, you know, just like, I guess, fans of modeling or guys, you know, that one is like, they don't, they don't get that, that, you know, I do this. I mean, granted, I do photography as a hobby. It started off as a hobby. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm decent to good at it, you know, um, and, you know, I've turned it into a business, you know, and it's like, I'm not going to do anything to fuck up, you know, my business trying to, you know what I mean? Do I think that? You know, my clients are attractive and stuff. Yeah, hell yeah, I be, you know, I'm not going to deny that. Yeah, all y'all are, are fucking beautiful, amazing, and, you know, got more curves than, you know, Houston roadways, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, but no, I'm not going to try and get with any of y'all. And even, you know, it's just it's just the whole professionalism thing to me right. and, and, you know, boundaries and all of that. You know, keep things professional. I mean, yeah, I kick it with some of them, you know, outside of... Uh, uh, you know, photography and stuff like that and, and keep it pushing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, another thing that, that gets me upset with uh, photography is people wanting fast turnarounds. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Especially when they How want... How fast-ish? 
I, I, <laughs> What's the fastest turnaround you think? And you was like, hell no. <laughs> you know, and people got to realize too, and I'm, well, I'm open about this only on my personal Facebook page. I don't talk about it. So if someone only follows me on, let's say, Instagram, then they don't get the whole picture of my life because I only post right, pictures right, there, you know. But people got to understand, I still have a nine to five day job that's very physically demanding, yeah. you know, then doing photography. And now since June, I've started this podcast. And like you and I talked, we were just talking last night during prep about, you know, behind the scenes of photography with editing, if we're going to have on both our respective shows, if we're going to have a guest, following up with guests, obtaining guests, you know, reaching out to people, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, shit, making sure the bills are paid here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because we actually rent a studio and shit, you know? Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So it's like, if I, if I go to a two-hour photo shoot and take, you know, God knows how many pictures and stuff, it's like, okay... You factor in the day job. You factor in stuff I got to do for the podcast. Also factor in I got to sleep. I got to eat, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've ran into situations before where it's like I take a person pictures on Saturday. And by Monday, you know, they're hitting me up, asking me where their pictures are. It's like. Well, goddamn, I've, I've only added one. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I do got other obligations and stuff. Like, ho hold the hell on. And, like, mm -hmm. I try to. Well, one thing I do, especially when it comes to wedding photography, I tell the bride, I tell the mother of the bride, I tell all the higher-ups, like, hey, you know, I was at your eight-hour wedding or whatever. These pictures are going to take some time, mm -hmm. you know? Now, as I'm editing, you know, as I'm doing, you know, the editing, if you want me to email you some, you know, to give you a little something to post on social media for you, you know, for the cloud or whatever, I can do that. No problem. You know, but mm -hmm. don't expect if I do a, a five to six hour wedding on a Sunday for me to have all of your pictures back by, you know, that Tuesday. Like, no, that's, yeah, that's a even good. without, even if I took time off from work, if I called into work, that's still impossible because I have to sleep. I have to eat. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that means I would literally have to be, and it takes about, ooh, for me, on average, a picture, anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes a picture to edit a picture. That's removing, mm -hmm. when it comes to when we're removing blemishes, adjusting the lighting here and there, maybe doing some other special effects or something. And then don't let it be that there's something in the background that's distracting. I have to remove that or compensate for right. that. Adjust the lighting because there's lighting both in the foreground and the background. So if there's something, you know, doing all that stuff, you know, um, some people um, are, are self-conscious about their tattoos, you know, removing tattoos mm -hmm. or uh, morphing the body. Some people, I know a chick that, um, I think I mentioned it on, an, on another episode here, she was self-conscious about her arms. So I know with that particular client, anytime we shoot, I got to shrink her arms down a little bit, you know, yeah. and that, you know, that stuff takes time. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, Another annoying thing <laughs> Another about <one>. photography <laughs> is, you said it. is um, moving on is I want to say, that, well, people not understanding the cost involved with being a photographer because equipment alone is hell of expensive. You know what I mean? Like several, I mean, just the low end equipment itself for cameras is several hundred dollars almost a thousand with tax and that's and you know that's not secondhand shit that's brand new real deal holy field shit Yikes. like you know from best buy you know what i mean <laughs> you know and what gets me about photography sometime and i understand that people um you know everybody's looking for a deal everybody's looking for a discount you know people are trying to save money but there's certain there's certain industries out there that can't afford <clears throat> because of what's put into that industry to offer a discount, you know, and I hate it when mm. people come to me and, you know, they either tell me what they're willing to pay or they ask me like, oh, well, how much you charge for this, that, and the other? And I give them my price. Or I refer them to the website. Right. And it's like, oh, well, you know, can you do this? Like, no, I can't. My price is my price, especially this year when I'm working with brand new equipment from the ground up, you know? Damn. I got a brand new Canon T7i camera with all the bells and whistles. Actually, I think if, if it's connected to the internet... I can fucking remote control the camera. I can have the camera here and fucking remote control the camera from home. You know? You, you remember, you see me when I do my guess and I yeah, let I, them look oh, at the camera on my phone. That. Yeah, yeah, they love I, that I shit. might say yeah. that. I had to add that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so it's like, 
I can literally remote control the camera from anywhere as long as it's connected to an internet connection. You know, that camera was like 900 bucks. The new laptop I got, the high power gaming laptop, even though I don't game, I had to get a gaming laptop to handle video and um, just to have the power to do multimedia stuff. And and I got a low end gaming laptop because I don't need nothing too fancy. I'm not trying to like fucking make, you know, documentaries and be a Steven Spielberg and shit, right, you right, know. Right. But my gaming laptop um, was just under $1,000, you know. So that right there, let's just round it up another hundred, you know. So that's $2,000 this year that I've spent on the actual hardware, not to mention for the camera, I've gotten accessories as far as an extended lens. I've got lens caps, you know, um, got a new camera bag, got a new tripod, um, got new software, got, um, uh, you know, just a, a ton of other, you know, tech stuff to complement everything. And, you know, that shit costs money. So, of course, I want to make that money back. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, you know. Um, not wrong for that. Yeah, you know, like, nah, no no, no freebies over here, especially, you know, when it comes to, uh, um, you know, to video and shit. And people don't understand. You know, it's like they always say, you know, money doesn't fall off of trees. Well, shit. I <laughs> mean, photography, that. yeah, photography stuff don't fall off of trees, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it really don't. You know, and I'll, I'll be honest, and i tell anybody this, and I've said this on a previous episode, if it wasn't for the damn stimulus just because of how tight my budget is was this year, you know, it's like, if it wasn't for the damn stimulus and the fact that, like, for me, every this year, everything worked out money-wise good because I, I always file my income taxes late. Like, I mm -hmm. don't file my taxes until I need the money, you know, because mm -hmm. then I'm going to spend it off on some fuck shit or whatever, you know? So, file my taxes my taxes hit then the very next week or two weeks then the stimulus hit and then my regular paychecks in between there from the day job you know <laughs> so yeah so it's like you know i if it wasn't for the stimulus i wouldn't i de you know i probably would have been able to get one the camera or the laptop but definitely wouldn't be able to get both, both. you know yeah right so <clears throat> or at least like way down the line or whatever so but it was a good investment, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah, because this, um, you know, compared to the the previous can, I mean, the Sony did took good pictures too. Yeah, but yeah. It's um, but you know, it's really you know like night and day. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's it's crazy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just I just got air out my uh, uh, photography grievances and. Then, you know, another thing, like, with the with the pay thing, it's like, you know, people want to, and I, I know a lot of photographers can probably relate to this, it's like, you know, people kind of want to lowball you, but then they want the world, you know, they <laughs> want, you know, they want a picture, take it out in Galveston, but they want the water to look blue, and we all know Galveston has that dirt, nothing against Galveston, a lot of good no, people that's in the Galveston, truth, though, you, know, still. you know, like, Galveston, you know, Dirty, has that murky, brown water, water, but... You do a shootout in Galveston, they want the water to look like the Caribbean and shit, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you know how much work on the back end that's going to take in Photoshop? <laughs> if that's even fucking possible. I never tried it before, but, but shit, still. Yeah, true. Um, and then when it comes out, you know, like, uh, I've, been I've been reached by people. It's like, oh, you know, I want to do this shoot, you know, but you know, want to do this shoot way out in Timbuktu. Well, and I don't want to pay you 25 bucks. Well, 25 bucks ain't even going to cover my goddamn gas. You know, we going yeah. out the fucking, you know, the Texas-Louisiana border or some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? Like, damn, <laughs> the, the shit. <laughs> like, uh, it's, you know, it's it, it's a trip. And people got to realize that with, you know, any photographer, not just me. And I know photographers personally that spend a lot more on their equipment than I do. You know, um, cause you know, you got cameras out there that are um several thousand dollars, you know, mm -hmm. and especially uh for photographers who specialize in video, you know, like um I I think a low a low end video camera is probably gonna go for fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars easily. 
Um, and that's when that specialized in video that you can hit record and it's just going to keep on. It's not like my camera where I have to, you know, it automatically shuts off at 30 minutes because the sensor overheats oh, well, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, but... yeah. You know, it's, it's built and specialized for um, uh, video, you know, for, for, you know, making movies and shit like that, you know, so. Um, and then there's lenses that go into it, getting extra batteries and shit like that. Oh, and then there's storage space too, because because uh, you know I'm always telling you all the time about storage. You, know? you be like, you be like, do you need this? I can right. delete it. You asked me like three times just to make sure. Hell yeah, because <laughs> man, I've gone through so much damn storage space. Like my shit, my new laptop now is almost uh, at capacity. Damn. Yeah, I'm down to like I, I checked it earlier when you was doing your show. My laptop, as of right now, this episode is down to like 23 gigs memory of the internal memory. Oh. Which 23 gigs of memory to put that into contrast, that's like, because uh, your average movie now is like, what, two two gigs? So, or so two, four, six, eight, ten. So that's like 10 movies, you know? Uh. So yeah, so I need to look at either deleting some stuff, moving some stuff to my external hard drive, moving some stuff to my cloud, you know, doing... <laughs> Doing something, or, or I just might look into just. Uh, I think my my laptop has a slot for extra, an extra hard drive or something. I have to look into that. Take it to you know a specialist or something. But yeah, memory is a mother, and I have to keep with you know. And I, I like to keep an archive all of the work I do because you know I understand like when I do when I finish someone's pictures, I send them an email to the link. But I understand people lose emails and stuff, and then they come back to me. And it's like oh. What was the email? What was the link? Or do you have this photo? I do you, you know, I need to use it for a flyer or for, you know, whatever, whatever. Right. You know, I, um, no, nah, I, I totally, you know, I totally get that and understand it. Um, yeah, it's just like, damn, you know, like you don't go to Walmart or any, you know, big time, you know, store and ask for a discount. What the price is, the price is you either go pay it or you're not, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Straight up, you know what I mean? A small. But they'll try just, to play you like that, yeah. though. Oh, absolutely. And not just with small, not just with photography, but any small business, you mm -hmm. know, people always trying to ask for a discount or something. It's like, hey, if you're not going to ask, you know, the fucking cashier, the manager at Walmart, Target, you know, Kroger, whatever, for a discount, I'm on this, then don't don't think about asking us for, you know, discounts and shit neither. No, fuck you. You're going to pay the money or, or you're not, oh, yeah. you know? Right. <laughs> and, you know, and especially this year, you know, I, I, I would assume that a lot, I know me as a photographer, um, you know, really hurt this year because when the pandemic happened and they did the, you know, the nationwide lockdown, you know, that was around a time when I had, I was getting ready to gear up for, you know, prom pictures graduation pictures, I know. you know, um, some, uh, okay. Oh, you know, I do the comic book conventions mm -hmm. too. So I was getting ready A comic book conventions. That's my biggest moneymaker of the year. And all of that, all of that revenue in the instant gone, you know, yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. um, you know, that was, you know, I mean, thankfully I got a, a, a full time day job, but like I was telling a friend of mine, I was like, damn, what if I was just solely a photographer not having any kind of like part time or full time job as a backup, I would be fucked. Been, when that lockdown yeah. happened, I would have been yeah. fucked. Like, what the hell? You know, people couldn't go outside. People were scared to go outside. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things. And and I remember during graduation, I reached out to some to some people at uh, U of H. Some people I know personally, um, like on the women's basketball team. I knew two people that were graduating. And it had got to the point because everything was canceled and both of them, you know, both the chicks I know on the U of H basketball team was like, hey, man, you know, thanks for the support and everything, but I'm not doing no pictures. And I don't blame them. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like they, at this point, they just want to get their damn diploma and go about their lives, <laughs> you know? Damn. You know, and, and you know, I, I you know, I, I get it, you know, and I don't blame them one bit. You know, you have the, the fun and everything, you know, sucked out of everything, you know? Um, and I want to flip it to the good side of things with photography. If you're, like in my case, I'm a photographer that don't try to limit myself. I'm willing to work with all kinds of people, do all kinds of concepts and stuff, um, go out to all kinds of different events and conventions and shit, meet people. One of the most rewarding things in my, um, in, in my opinion of being a photographer is 
all of the people you get to meet. Like, mm. that's one thing I could truly say for me that's been, like, the biggest blessing of all, even more so than the money, is all the different type of people I've been able to meet. You know, right. from fucking lawyers to politicians to, you know, athletes to world-class athletes, you know, like Asha. Um, um, you know, different, you know, different, you know, models I've been able to meet that got, you know, like a ton of fucking Instagram followers and, and you know, internet clout and shit. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's been pretty, pretty cool, you know what I'm saying? And that, and that leaves the door open to anything, which is, you know, why I started this podcast. Cause you know, when, you know, when you were talking about, and you said this on your show before blue about going into your own mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, you know, let me get in on this because I know a lot of people from different walks of life. I could do a show myself. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, it's like every week, theoretically, I could have a different guest, and I have. You know, very first guest was a fucking, you know, doctoral, de- you know, a chick that holds, like, six degrees and a mm-hmm. doctorate of law from uh, Third Good Marshall School of Law and a 10-time self-published author, Dicey Grinner. She was eager to come, and I thank her immensely yeah. for being, you know, the first guest and, you know, dealing with our trials and, you know, tribulation, testing shit out. Um, you know, and, and, you know, the athletes that came in, the models that came in, the motherfucking scientists that have came in here, you know, um, yep. I think that's, you know, cause like it's, you know, it's just cool. Like if I'm talking to someone and, you know, I'm having a, I won't say a debate, but you know, you casually talk with friends or family or whatever. And then I'm like, Oh, you know what? I know someone. And I remember them telling me such and such, such and such. And it's like, Oh, you know, a doctor, like, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like, like, you- yeah. I know a doctor. Like, yeah. I, I, I took a doctor's photographs for, you know, for their wedding or, or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and then we, you know, follow each other or whatever, you know, and sometimes like with, um, like I need to, I need to get him on the show. I need to reach out to him, but I'll do it after the holidays. Cause I know I got family and shit, but like, uh, Dicey's husband, Danny, right. you know, he's a law professor, uh, you know, shout out to Danny Norris. He's a law professor at TSU and, um, you know, he has JD and law and shit. And what else he do? He sits on the, uh, he's a politician too. He sits on the Harris County Board of Education. He's one of the trustees and vice president. So on his personal Facebook page, you know, he talks about a lot of law and legal stuff. You know, and I'm mm-hmm. not saying I'm no lawyer, but, you know, I read his stuff. And then if I'm ever in a conversation, I can say like, hey, you know, what you're saying is wrong because I know a guy, <laughs> you know, no, I, I know an actual lawyer. And he just said the opposite, <laughs> you know, yesterday. You got to read up, you know, or whatever, you know, make myself sound, you know, somewhat intelligent. But, yeah, it's, it's been cool to meet, um, you know, so many people. Um, and, you know, this is going to sound real bad, Um but, you know, this is unrestricted, so I'm just going to just, you know, put it out there. Going back to what I said about the whole professionalism, as a guy, it is, I, you know, like, I grew up in Louisiana just kind of like an awkward kind of, you know, chubby kid, nerd kid. I was, you know, just how I am now. I'm all, I'm in the, you know, comic books and Star Trek and, you know, just the overall big nerd. Same thing, you know, same kind of, you know, kid I was growing up in Louisiana. You know, I was picked on, you know, for being a nerd, being chubby picked on about my name and shit, you know, high school and shit, you know, uh, well, I wouldn't say awkward, but, you know, really didn't, you know, go too well with the ladies and shit. And it's like, you fast forward now and it's like, women are willing to pay me to take pictures of them. Like, that's fucking cool. When you stop and think yeah. about it, it's like, you know, like where I've come from, you know, mm. and, I, and I hate to say this because it's a saying that's, been running to the ground, but, you know, like the, the, the song with Drake, you know, start from the bottom, now I'm here. You know, like, started off where, you know, in school, no girls wanted to fucking talk to me and shit, and now, fast forward, and women are willing to pay me to take pictures of them. I thought you was <laughs> gonna say Mike Jones. Back then, they didn't want me, now I'm hot, they all on me. Hey. Well, I would say it for like a... a no, a I'm messing thing. with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> but, man, you know, like... <laughs> You know, like sometimes I even like have to step back and like for instance, like I did a Christmas shoot. Um, I think it's been about two weeks now. Or no, it's been probably a week or whatever. And you know, the ladies that came, a lot of them, like I thought when I heard I signed up through this Christmas shoot, I'm thinking it's gonna be like Christmassy. You know what I mean? But some of the women there were in like their underwear. They were like in boudoir clothing and shit. You know, so okay. I'm looking around and like part of me, I'm looking around. I'm like. 
damn, these chicks are walking around this studio in their underwear, you know, half naked. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you know, even I have to take a step back. It's like, am I living the American dream? You know? Oh, like, like, it's not, you know, yeah. Was, <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I'm me. actually getting, like, <laughs> I'm actually allowed to do this? Like, <laughs> what? And, and they're nice to me too? Like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like they're they're nice and friendly. It's like, damn, how come I couldn't get this back in, in, in high school and middle school and shit? You know, like, but you know, be that as it may, I mean, it's you know, it's it's super cool to, you know, to, you know, to the to, to say that, to say that, you know, going back that women are comfortable with me to and their respective, you know, significant others, you know, say, Well, hey, you know, you're gonna be in, you know, doing a boudoir shoot or swimwear mm-hmm. or implied nude or whatever with, you know, I'm known by many names by Ish, by Barry, by Barry Media, whatever, Ish Barry, Ishmael, whatever the hell you wanna call me. And okay, that's cool. You know, nothing, you know. Because they respect you because you're professional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, abs- absolutely. You know, um, and, and, you know, one of the other things I like about photography, you know, when it does happen is just the notoriety is, you know, sometimes after clear blue, you know, having, you know, work that was published. And sometimes I don't even know the shit. It's, it's like I've been published before. And like, uh, for instance, Lady Bassarina, back when she was modeling, it'll be out the crib, like we'll do a photo shoot and she'll text me. And it's a screenshot of a magazine that she got a picture that we took in, you know, and I'm like, so, fuck? you know, yeah, your, your girls get published. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, you know, I've been published. And, and, yeah. Like, yeah, absolutely. Which was yeah. quite an honor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it is, you know, especially when that magazine puts, you know, my correct information mm-hmm. there, you know, that the social media stuff for Barry Media and it's like, Holy shit, like there's people, God knows how many people around the country is going to pick up this magazine. That and is absolutely and true. My work, like that, that's 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 pretty goddamn cool, you know. Yeah. Um, and again, especially coming from a kid growing up in Louisiana that was, you know, damn near told he was never going to be nothing in life but some dork, you know what I mean? <laughs> but but that's a whole other story, you know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean that's you know shit like that is is a huge honor. Or even like if I go to conventions or events and you know, being recognized, you know, someone mm-hmm. like, you know, going to the comic book conventions and someone stopping me and it's like, oh, you're that Barry Media guy? Yeah. Oh, man, I love that work you did with such and such. It's like, oh, wow, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, and, you know, they could tell me exactly the picture that that was, you know, their favorite, yeah. who was in it, the background, you know, what it was, the date it was taken, you know, because if you're a fan of something, you're a fan of something, you know, True. if you like art, you know, you know, you could go to a museum and see your favorite picture. You know exactly how it is, and you're describing that to someone. And you know, I always thought that that was a uh, um, that was pretty cool. Like I remember one time I was at an anime convention here in Houston, and this guy stopped me. Never seen this guy before in my life, and he he stopped me. He was like, "Hey, you're that Barry Media guy, huh?" And he was. I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "Oh, you work with Dicey and Jace a lot, right?" And I was like, "Yeah." And uh. Uh-huh. And he was like, oh, man, I love them, too. He was like, you know if they're going to be here? I was like, well, I said, they really don't do anime conventions. I was like, they just do the regular comic book conventions. I was like, I'm just here snapping pictures. I said, I got a lot of friends. He was like, oh, okay. He was like, well, and I forgot the cast name, but I remember getting on Twitter immediately and tagging Dicey and Jason was like, you know, hey, I ran to this guy named whatever his name was. You know, he says hi at the anime convention. But, um, you know, it was cool that the guy recognized me, which on – especially like on my Instagram, I hardly ever post pictures of me. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm always behind the camera. Yeah, I post a selfie behind the scenes or whatever every once in a while, you know. But for the guy to recognize me and then know two people that I work with on the regular being Dicey and Jace and, you know. That's the big deal. Out. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty That's pretty neat. Um, another venue is, you know, two people recognize me at, you know, um, bodybuilding stuff or whatever so it, and of course it you know u of h or whatever but yeah it's 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 very rewarding the key thing is you know you gotta play your cards right put in the work um and, and another thing i'm obsessed with when it comes okay. to photography is the technology me being a big you know tech nerd is mm-hmm. like keeping up with the technology getting new toys playing with mm-hmm. them 
you know, like when I got the new camera, you know, hitting up someone like, hey, get this new equipment, need to test it out, you know, oh, who yeah. wants to, <laughs> you know, who wants to shoot, you know, let's, you know, let's do this, you know, like I'm, I'm obsessed with, you know, toys. I mean, shit, I'm still mastering my damn camera, shit, <laughs> I'm still mastering the goddamn laptop too, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized the goddamn laptop has a built-in timer and shit. Like, wow. <laughs> that, you know, I always use my phone as a timer, but you know, still. Um, but nah, those, those, you know, just, um, and you know, I don't want to deter anyone that's listening that, you know, wants to be a photographer, especially guys. You know, it's like if a guy out there wants to be a photographer, cool, go for it, but. Go into photography for the right reasons. Don't go into it trying to fucking hook up. This ain't fucking Tinder. Mm. This ain't, you know, this ain't fucking telemates or some shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, this is a professional, you know, craft. I and mean, then you don't want to be known as that creepy guy. And I hate to go back to the bad, but, you know, and then, like, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups that are, you know, dedicated to local Houston photographers, and people talk, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. when when women run across a photographer that's shady, that's a creep or whatever, she will get in mm-hmm. a fucking group and take screenshots and shit and document that experience and be like, hey, you know, don't work with this creep because mm-hmm. he was at this shoot and he did this, that, and the other, or he inboxed me, da 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 And then, you know, you're basically put on a damn blacklist. Like, you know, and I try to tell people all the time is that, you know, just because someone isn't talking to you doesn't mean that they're not talking about you to someone else. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and, and no, reputation, that's true. And reputation is, uh, is, is everything, especially in photography. You know, you, you got you to gotta be on your, your P's and Q's. I mean, you know, case in point, last night I did a, another Christmas shoot and two of my favorites were there who were on, who were on my show, Lola Vaughn and Scarlett Adams. And both of them had on... Um, their rendition of Mrs. Claus. And, you know, both of them were wearing, like, you know, you know, both Lola and Scarlett are very, you know, busty, heavy chested mm-hmm. women. They got thick thighs, so the skirts were short or whatever. So I came, the club that we were at has two levels. So I came from the second level downstairs. So it's like the guy in me, upon looking at them, wanted to say, God damn, you know, I want one of those. Okay. But then I remember, like, okay. I'm at a photo shoot. There's other people here. We're at a professional sale. I was like, and, you know, I had to change it up. It was like, ladies, y'all look awesome tonight. You know, I love your outfits. You know, let's go shoot. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know, and, and, like, especially especially Lola. Like, I, I, I've got to know Lola, you know, personally. We inbox each other a lot about different things and stuff. And it's like, I know, you know, she did a little funny skit in here when I said mm, she was oh, yeah, cold know, grits. Lola. I'm sure... She wouldn't have mind if I just would have let out a big ghetto ass. God damn. But still, it's like, it's not the time or the place for it. Like here, you know, the podcast and shit, you know, yeah, it's a little different. Absolutely. But out of that shoot, you know, it's like, eh, you know, nah, you know, other people are watching because there were some other girls there who I hadn't met before. So I'm really trying to, you know, feel their vibe and everything. They're like, <laughs> oh, that dude's a little unprofessional or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, it's like, you never know who's, uh, um, who's watching you. You know what I mean? So... Um, so yeah, I think, um, I think that about wraps up, but at the end of the day, though, even though I started this episode with the bad stuff, I still wouldn't be doing photography on top of this podcast if the good did not weigh the bad. Absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Absolutely. meeting people, um, you know, the notoriety, of course, the money when it comes, mm-hmm. um, you know, being published and the me with the whole being published, that's very important because, you know, Knock on wood, but if I pass away or when I pass away, my work is still out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like someone to still pick up a magazine and be like, oh, this is an awesome picture. Is it? Like, oh, Barry Media. Let me look up and see what else this guy did. You know, and that's, yeah. you know, that's creating a legacy, that's so true. to speak. You know what I mean? You know, um, oh, yeah. And, you know, who knows what the future may hold, you know, um, with, you know, maybe, you know, doing small little movie projects here or there or, you know, Whatever. But, you know, again, to wrap this thing up. It's coming. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you know, guys just got to be, guys who want to get in photography, do it for the right reasons. Do it because you love photography. Do it because maybe you love, you know, technology. You love art. You love pictures. Don't do it because you want to, you know, hook up with, you know, females or whatever. You know, that's not, that's not cool. And it, 
And it gives kind of the rest of us a bad name right. also. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, um, and and also most importantly, you know, you have to talk for, you know, like have fun with it, you know. Um, yeah, and that's, that's all I got to say about that, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So you as a model, real quick, what do you what are your, some of your favorite things about photography? Being or being photographed, playing dress up, playing dress up, getting looks, and it and it helps working with you, knowing angles and and studying poses the way you've done. Sometimes I come in there with uh, an idea, but you'd be like, you should do this. Uh, I saw the, a girl, and you'll show me. You you be on point. I, I try. Nah, you, you, every time you've suggested something, that's been like my favorite. <laughs> it's been my favorite. I call it the money shot. Yeah, because like, yeah. I look at it like this, like, I, you know, mainly when it comes to models, I work with a lot of curvy women. Um, So like on Instagram, for example, I follow a lot of the curvy IG models, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, if I see a chick that did a photo shoot or whatever, is she have kind of the same dimensions as you and you're coming up with the shoes like, okay, well, can you do this? You know what I mean? Or give me that right. look. And it's, you know, yeah. So, yeah, because like, I remember one day I was at work and I was on lunch and I was flipping through Instagram and it was like, how many models do you follow? I was like, really? All these Instagram models I follow is basically research. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, like, I mean, I don't, I mean, like, I mean, I guess like as a guy, I do lust after them or whatever, but you know, I can say, like, oh, yeah, you know, she got curved. She looks good or whatever. But it's like, when it comes down to it, if you hit me up for a photo shoot or a scholar, depending on what kind of photo shoot it is, and I'm trying to brainstorm ideas, whether it's like, okay, you know what? I know someone with that particular body type. Let me go on their Instagram and see, mm-hmm. you know, you know, if I could get some ideas for poses or whatever, send it out to you or whoever so y'all could practice on them or whatever. Because I know some of those poses are hard as shit, you right. know? <laughs> <laughs> and, um... And you know, get get everything done and have a good shoot, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, so how much you like to play? You know, dress up. With, I think that's probably your favorite part. I'm huh? playing. That's my favorite part. Like buy clothes. And I was shit. just about to say, <laughs> yeah, getting the outfit and then, oh my goodness, I just love dressing up and the after, like seeing it after the fact. I'd be like, damn, we did, we killed it again. I forgot to mention that's another rewarding part. Yes. Is like. I don't care who it is, who I photograph, what type of photography. It could be a wedding. It could be, you know, family portraits, modeling or whatever. But I love the after effect. Mm -hmm. You know, a photographer, you put in the hard work at a shoot. And then behind, you know, the computer, you know, you're adding. Then when you send your pictures off to your client and they come back just, you know, ecstatic. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Like I did some pictures for a coworker of mine back in October yeah, you were with me. You met my coworker. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to uh, to um, fuck, I forgot her name. God damn it! Shout out to Shante. No, fuck, my mind went blank because I'm not at work. I have to know their names. But um, the fuck is her name? Uh, Shaquita. God damn it! <laughs> shout out to my co- <laughs> I can't go to listen. We to that got to, now. yeah. I was about to say yeah. edit that. Part. Yeah, you know, shout out to Shaquita. It's like when I when I got done with, and she gave me one of those, and that's what I loved about clients like her because Shaquita. You know, she told me, like, hey, we're going to do this photo shoot on a Saturday, and I need the pictures done that Tuesday. And she told me this well in advance, so I took the time off from work, and I was able to meet that deadline, you know. Uh-huh. When she got those pictures back, you know, I sent them to her, waited, you know, and then, I mean, she just blew up my phone. And then she blew up on my phone, two reasons. One, she texted me and was, like, thanking me. It's like, oh, I love them. My friends love them because she, you know, it was a, a group photo shoot thing with some of her friends. And then... I got all these tags on social, on uh, Facebook in particular, both mm-hmm. my personal page and my business page because they love them so much and they just post it like, like that's very rewarding and, and gratifying. You know? Yeah, like, nah, that's, totally. That's fucking, you know, dope as hell, you know. Um, yeah, I was like, a, um, one of the chicks at the shoot last night, I had did pictures for her previously and I was late to the shoot because I was finishing up her pictures. So I ran into her and uh, her name is Jess and I was like, hey, I just finished up your pictures tonight what's the email address I can send you the link? And so I sent them right there. So in between shoots, you know, at a group shoot, you know, you take a break or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, she went and she looked at them and she was like, oh my God, I love them. I'm like, oh, you do? Like sometimes even with me, like I don't think my work is that good. And then with a person, especially like a person I don't know because it was my first time working with, 
uh, you know, that model. And, you know, she loved them, and she showed me her favorite ones and stuff. And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, post them, you know? Like, because I definitely post them next week since they're Christmas pictures, you know? I'm trying right. to, you know, get all these Christmas analytics and stuff. But, yeah. Um, and do you like the feedback that you get from, like, fans on social all, media? All the time, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, man, dog, your Twitter followers, man, especially when we take pictures and it kind of focuses on your crazy. ass. I'm sorry. Hey. They be happy yeah, they go in. I ain't gonna uh, lie. Yeah, oh they be going God. in. Nah, I, I live for it. I really do. I'm, I'm really needing some to just go shoot. I just want to go on a weekend, me and you, and just go shooting downtown, and in, in a look. Seriously, yeah, hey, it's, I'm down. it's uh overdue, but most definitely um the, like I said, I've even been published several times. Oh yeah, you've been published uh, no, with yeah. your your brand. So um yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, it very is, yeah. So. Especially the theme shoots, y'all. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap this puppy up on this 20th episode of Barry Media Unrestricted. Thank you for listening to the end. And uh, don't forget, you can buy some merch. I'll leave all that in the description. You can make a charitable monthly or one-time donation. That's also be in the description. And don't forget to listen to us on, you know, we're, we're everywhere. We're on... Uh, Goddamn Spotify, Ooh, goddamn Apple Podcast, uh, iTunes, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, you name it, we're on it. Basically, just type in Barry Media Unrestricted or Unrestricted Podcast, and on uh, YouTube too. So, hope everybody have a good weekend, good golf, whatever. Have a good Christmas holiday. We'll be back next week though. Um, Whatever makes you happy in the words of the great Marvin Zingler. (laughs) Till next time, good night.